Uh, so in this video, what we're going to take a look here at is the introduction uh, to uh, Hebrew prophetic literature. So taking just a, a wide general view of the nature of Old Testament uh, prophetic material. Uh, so first of all, we'll begin with uh, Israelite prophets. And when we talk about prophets, in other words, what do Old Testament authors uh, mean when they are referring to someone as a prophet? Uh, well, we have different uh, main characters of prophetic books. So that is books that are seen as uh, prophecy. And there are these individuals attached to the, the, this material. So individuals like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Jonah, etc. Uh, we have what we call major prophets and minor prophets. But there were also other prophets of Israel. So people who are called prophets, Moses, Aaron, uh, Elijah and Elisha. So these don't have, uh, you know, books that are titled after uh, their names, uh, but these are individuals who are thought or considered uh, to uh, represent the activities of prophets. So the Hebrew word navi uh, conveys the idea that a person uh, has been called uh, and often uh, to speak on behalf of another. And or as far as Old Testament prophets are concerned, they speak on behalf of God. So Old Testament prophets are also seers. And by this term seers, what we mean is that they uh, receive some kind of vision uh, and or messages uh, from God. And those are the things that they are communicating uh, to others. Uh, prophetic activity seems to be uh, most active. Uh, most of the activity is during political times of crisis. And the intent is to, prove, to provide uh, divine guidance in response to temptations that Israelites might uh, have to become unfaithful to God. So the prophets are, are speaking, uh, revealing God's will uh, as Israel has to face some type of crisis, usually an invading army or the threat of an invading army, and the prophets are seeing what's going to happen uh, is a part of God's judgment upon Israel uh, for her sinfulness. And, you know, most oftentimes the, the greatest sin is their participation in idolatry, which is also um, uh, connected to their social injustice. So because both things are occurring, God's judgment is going to come upon them. So uh, we do have a prophecy that also is occurs in the ancient Near East. Um, so ancient Near Eastern uh, prophecy, uh, archaeological evidence has been discovered for prof uh, prophetic activity. In other words, there is archaeological ev evidence that uh, people are aware or people talk about uh, prophetic um, uh, activity among all kinds of uh, various ancient Near Eastern cultures. And this goes as far back as the 18th century BC. Now, closer to the time of the divided kingdom of Israel, there is evidence of prophecy among the uh, Neo-Assyrian Empire. So that's the seventh century BC. So what we're seeing uh, in um, Israelite prophecy is something that we're also seeing in other ancient Near Eastern uh, cultures, communities. The evidence indicates that prophecies uh, were designed uh, primarily for rulers about uh, how they should conduct or maybe have conducted wrongly either liturgical activities. Uh, so in other words, they're doing, uh, they're, they're engaged in their sacrifices incorrectly or they're carrying out certain uh, worship activities incorrectly, um, or what they need to do um, in terms of appeasing the gods or appealing to the gods, or maybe they're doing something uh, wrong militarily or something that they ought to be doing militarily, uh, or really even sometimes architectural activities, uh, things that they have built and which displeases uh, gods or things that need to be built. So um, pro prophets can uh, ancient in the ancient Near East talk about all these uh, different aspects. Uh, so the words of the gods uh, come to the prophets through uh, dreams that they have. They have visions and they uh, are in some kind of trance. Uh, 
So this kind of communication from the other world comes to these individuals, and then these individuals pass them on. M most oftentimes, though, uh, of the prophecy in the ancient Near East, it is directed towards the ruler. So as far as early Israelite prophecy is concerned, um, uh, some were leaders of the people, so people like Moses and Deborah and Samuel. These are prophets, uh, Israelite prophets. Uh, many were advisors, though they were not always appointed uh, to kings. So, um, you know, Samuel does advise Saul after Saul becomes king and he advises um, or he's participating, as it were, in um, the selection of David. Nathan uh, is a, a prophet that, you know, advises uh, David, so he can be seen as an appointed one. But Elijah and Elisha are not really appointed, uh, and nevertheless they speak as kind of this social conscious, conscience um, to the uh, rulers in the northern kingdom. Uh, prophets during the divided kingdom uh, around the 8th century BC uh, were often uh, denouncers of Israelite idolatry and social injustice, and what they're trying to do is call for repentance um, and the warning of exile um, to uh, both kings and the general populace. So, uh, not uh, whereas the ancient Near Eastern prophecies are primarily directed towards uh, the, the rulers, uh, Israelite prophecy differs in, in this regards where they talk to the populace themselves. So, in other words, the king can't talk to the populace or is not communicating God's will to the populace, so these prophets are having to, to do so. Uh, there, there's not any evidence uh, in the ancient Near leader of prophets like these uh, writing prophets in Israel. So, we call, you know, people like Amos, Hosea, um, Isaiah, and, and Jeremiah writing prophets because there are these books that um, are kind of written down uh, prophecies that are attached to them. So it doesn't mean that these prophets are the ones who compose the books that we have, but they, their prophecies are, have been written down, and um, there it does develop a tradition of these prophets being responsible for the writing of their prophecy. While um, prophets in other ancient Near Eastern cultures uh, called for the practice of, of rituals, uh, Hebrew prophets, or Israelite prophets, often denounce uh, rituals uh, that are used in substitution for acts of justice and mercy. So, in other words, while the prophets in the ancient Near East were oftentimes telling people to uh, appease the gods through you know, liturgical uh, activities. Um, these uh, prophets of the Old Testament are warning the Israelites that you can't appease God with your rituals uh, if you also aren't acting in justice um, uh, with others. So if you're neglecting issues of justice, your uh, sacrifices is not going to act as some kind of substitution for that. So both need to be occurring. Um, and Hebrew eschatology um, also helped to distinguish uh, Israelite uh, prophecy uh, from ancient Near Eastern uh, prophecy. So the ways in which uh, Israelite prophecy seems to you know, be thinking about God having a purpose or a plan, a, a direction, uh, whereas that's not as much of a characteristic for ancient Near Eastern uh, a prophecy. So this idea of God moving the moving history to some kind of end, uh, to some kind of purpose, um, helps to distinguish Israelite prophecy from the others. So I'm going to uh, conclude here with just looking uh, about prophecy as uh, foretelling uh, the future. So, a lot of the content of prophetic books in the Old Testament um, has to do with primarily four things. So, one is an, an accusation of covenant unfaithfulness. 
So the reason why prophets speak is someone is, is not acting in accordance with God's law for them. Now we do have, well, most of the time, uh, the, the vast majority of our Old Testament uh, prophetic books are directed towards Israel or to you know, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Uh, but uh, you get a book like Jonah, and that's uh, a prophecy to, uh, to non-Israelites. But still, it's this idea that God, in his sovereign role over all nations, uh, has laws or expectations of how nations should be, behave, uh, how rulers should behave. And so Jonah is going, you know, warning about Nineveh not doing what God uh, wants, you know, these non-Israelites to do. Uh, but most of the time, it's it has to do with Israel's unfaithfulness to the covenant relationship that they have with God uh, through Abraham and, and Moses. Uh, an announcement as well of impending punishment for Israel's unfaithfulness. So we oftentimes think of kind of a deuteromistic history here where if you obey God's law, you will prosper and be blessed. But if you are disobedient to God's law, there are curses and punishments. And so because of this unfaithfulness, um, you know, primarily with idolatry and social injustice, then God is going to come and um, or bring about uh, an event that will demonstrate his displeasure. He'll bring about some uh, empire who will come and crush the people and take people uh, away into exile and enslave the people so they will uh, lose uh, access to their land. They will lose uh, the opportunity to kind of govern themselves so they will become enslaved. Uh, because they have uh, turned their back on God and turned their back on the covenant. There's also oftentimes instructions on how to avoid what God is preparing to do unless Israel uh, repents. So this is an important thing about prophecy. Uh, prophecy is oftentimes is written or is presented as something that is going to happen. But prophecy is always kind of contingent uh, on people responding to the message and changing their ways. So even though it sounds as if uh, here is something that's kind of set that God is going to do, if you turn around and respond positively, then God will uh, not do uh, what he says he will do. So pro Old Testament prophecy is um, always kind of contingent. Um, condi it's conditional on the responses. A good example of this would be with uh, Jonah, as Jonah does want, does tell the Ninevites of what God is going to do. Then, then the Ninevites, you know, repent, and God doesn't do what He said He was going going to do. So, um, so oftentimes the prophets have within them uh, the kinds of behaviors that God is. Um, uh, expecting of them. And if they will do those things, then what is prophesied as uh, is going to happen won't happen. And so the prophecy acts here more kind of laying out these are the conditions. And uh, so we can't look at prophecy and say, oh, well, this was unfulfilled. Well, it may have been unfulfilled because of some kind of response that Israel had, and that's why God doesn't carry out what uh, he says. So prophecy needs to be uh, kept in mind of its kind of conditional nature. Uh, and then there's a, a reminder oftentimes of God's covenant faithfulness. So while Israel is unfaithful, engaging in idolatry, engaging in social injustice, uh, God's going to be faithful uh, to future Israel, so he may punish a certain generation, but he's going to stay true to this, these descendants. Um, and um, though he will discipline a current generation's unfaithfulness, um, he's going to bring back people, he's going to restore people, um, so that there will always be this people who will um, have this relationship with him. 
And so this reveals a, a key characteristic of God, that God, despite human beings being unfaithful, God will be faithful to the uh, arrangement that he has made uh, with his people. I'll, I'll end here just talking a little bit about uh, prophecy as uh, prediction or causation. So I've kind of hinted at this al already a little bit in what I said with point three. Um, but to go into a little bit more uh, depth, you may want to check out the assigned reading in uh, a survey of the Old Testament, uh, pages uh, 15, uh, 5, uh, 12 through 515, and there uh, the authors will uh, you know, talk a little bit more about what they mean as prophecy, as acting as a cause of things that are going to happen, and to be careful about thinking of it as simply a prediction of what will happen. Uh, and so we also need to be thinking about this in regards to what some consider fulfillment of the Old Testament uh, in the New Testament. Uh, we have to have some kind of caution here. When you see in the New Testament um, an author saying this fulfills something out of the Old Testament, it may not be fulfilling it in the exactly the same way we oftentimes think of a one-to-one -one match. So, for instance, you know, if um, the Gospel of Matthew wants to talk about uh, Jesus' uh, birth to a virgin, uh, somehow or another fulfills a prophecy of Hi Isaiah, well, it's not, a, it's not claiming that what Isaiah was, you know, prophesying about uh, was only this event. In other words, Isaiah may not even, you know, be thinking anything about, you know, what would happen hundreds and hundreds of years later. The Isaiah prophecy in Isaiah 7 has to do with the birth of, of Hezekiah. So um, it's not really about the birth of Jesus, but the author of Matthew sees in this birth of Jesus a connection with that, that announcement, that activity, especially because he's reading from a Septuagint virgin, uh, version um, which uses for the Hebrew word Alma, meaning young, young maiden, uses the more specific word virgin in it. So, um, so he sees a connection between that text and this tradition of Jesus' uh, birth to a, a virgin. And so something that means fulfilled is not the one-to-one -one correspondence. It can be the sense of, of seeing something uh, and in light of. And so that seemed to be a characteristic of other Jewish groups to read prophetic materials and to interpret current events in light of those things that were being talked about or referenced or anticipated um, for a much earlier time. So we just have to be very careful uh, not to say, not to claim that, well, this prophecy is fulfilled specifically by this event in the New Testament. Um, it's not that it's a one-to-one -one correspondence, but that things that are going on that uh, Christians believe demonstrates God's sovereignty or God's involvement, these things are reflected or um, uh, brought into light by looking at particular prophetic material. So anyway, um, that gives a brief kind of sketch of prophecy um, in the Old Testament in general, and we'll look more specifically at different, different prophets and um, the themes and ideas uh, in those prophets in uh, future uh, lessons.